Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the input stream reader class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the um, input stream reader class. And this really is kind, of, is kind of building on the introduction to I.O., the input output. So let's go and select that there. So the input stream reader class can serve multiple purposes, but primarily is used to convert byte streams to character streams. This tutorial builds on concepts from my introduction to I.O. tutorial. I highly recommend watching it first. Input stream reader has several overloaded constructors with each um, basically taking an input stream like system.in or file input stream is the first parameter, a little typo there. Uh, this tutorial will util utilize the constructor that um, only takes the single parameter. The input stream reader class is a method called close that will close the stream and release any system resources associated with it. Now the close method should always be called once you are done with the input stream. In Java 7, a new feature called try with resources was introduced. Specifically, a resource is an object that must be closed after the program is finished with it. Now, the try with resources statement ensures that each resource is closed at the end of the statement. Um, how do we know if a class is a resource? Well, that's simple. If it implements java.lang.autoclosable, the class can be considered a resource. Now, I'll demonstrate how this feature works. And I'm just going to come over here to the input stream uh, documentation up here. And you can see it um, implements auto-closable, right? So that basically is how we know that it can be a try with, try with resources. It's eligible for that. And I know that's not making much sense, but I'll demonstrate the difference between the two and how that new feature works in here. So let's go ahead and come down here and highlight all this source code here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't have one, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting New, Shortcut, and CMD Next, and Finish. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. Type in Java C, which is our Java compiler command. Well, you should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing a Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. Um, I'm going to make a directory here called java with the md command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Alright, I'm going to change directories to the java folder. I'm going to make a directory called isr, right? Input stream reader is what that'll be short for. Let's change directories to the isr folder and let's notepad up isr.java. Okay. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right, so basically importing the Java um, IO package, everything inside of that. Simple class ISR, main method entry point. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is display to the console, enter some letters, that string literal. Now I'm gonna create a new input stream reader um, object here. ISRs are, um, uh, boy, drawing a blank today. <laughs> Reference variable. It's early in the morning here. And new input stream reader. And in the constructor there, we're passing basically the system.in, right? Which is the input stream there. Um, that we choose to use. You could use other input streams. There's a lot of them, you know, uh, file input or file stream input, whatever. Anyway, this is the one that uh, we're going to mess around with today because that'll that's the defaults to the keyboard. So we we'll just type in some stuff rather than reading from a file. We'll get we'll get to that in future tutorials. Reading from files, reading and writing that there. So anyway, what we're going to do is invoke the read method there to basically start capturing the keystrokes in the keyboard, right? And that will um, produce uh, the, the read method returns back an integer value, right, letters, which is the exact same thing that the um, system.in.read method does as well. Now, um, the input stream reader also has a method called ready, right, and ready returns a boolean either true or false, and ready basically will return true as long as there is characters in the input stream that can still be read, okay? So um, we'll display to the console, you entered, and then we'll just simply do a while loop here, isr.ready, well, invoking the ready method there. 
If you remember from my previous tutorial, we had to check to see, you know, we had to loop through it until we got to a new line character, right? So basically we can just simply display that using the print. I'm still gonna have to cast it there, right? To um, a char type. And then we'll go ahead and read the, the next character in the, um, in the input stream there, okay? Now here is what we need to do here. We need to close the resource. Close the stream and release any resources associated with it, right? And then I'll just display a, um, you know, some dashes to the, the console there. So let's go ahead and run this here. And of course, up here I have to do throws IO exception because uh, system.in here um, will, it requires that, okay? Let's go ahead and clear our screen. Java C to compile it. Java to run it. Okay, so let's put in like ASDF, right? Now we display to the console true, which was basically the ISR.ready. I just want to show you how that worked there, right? And so you entered ASDF, right? So you can see that worked out pretty good there. All right, so it's a you know a little bit more functional than using just basically the system.in and read and doing all this stuff there. So not not a whole lot more valuable there. But let's talk about um, since this is really the first tutorial on this whole tutorial series that is you actually use system resources that need to be closed. Um, I'm going to show you the proper way to do this. And and you know when I was doing throws exception up here, this is just you know basically being uh, really lazy and cheap and you know just basically passing the buck basically to the JVM right not no good not good error handling practice at all there so let's go ahead and delete that we're just gonna um, highlight all this stuff and delete it and go over the proper way to do it now now that I've talked a little bit about that so let's uncomment these multi-line comments here and what we're gonna do is um, you know in the old well not the old but in typical try catch statement you've got um, try and then you've got your code block your try code block right here and then you have all your you know, your statements um, in here right and that's the way that works now with the new uh, try with resources there right we um, basically can put almost like a you know it's almost like a, a parameter list but it's it's what we want to uh, we're going to be creating an object inside of here right that's that's like the basic thing there have to create an object, and that's the reference to that object. Um, so basically, in these in this parentheses or you know parameter list type syntax there, ahead of the um, the body, right, which is with the open curly brace and the closing curly brace, we can put in the statement that we want to execute that's um, that implements closable, right? And so since input stream reader in implements auto closable, sorry. Um, it will go ahead and invoke the close method for us down here. So we don't have to do that there. So it's, it, it doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose, but you would be surprised at how many people forget to close up resources after they've opened them up. Because it's typically the last thing you do, you start writing code, you forget about it, right? So it's, it's that important that, uh, you know, the Java writers, creators decided, let's go ahead and make a try with resources there. If you can get in the habit of doing try with resources, you, it's much better than having to remember to put the close in there later on. So, um, so let's go ahead and just run that there, right? Um, let's come up here. Let's save this. Let's clear our screen, recompile, and let's put in ASDF. And you entered ASDF. So that's basically how that works. As you can see, it was the same as what I did before. Right, and we're just looping while is ready is is true, right? And then we don't have to close it because try with resources will go ahead and automatically close it. Basically, once it finishes with this um, with your code block, that's the point where it'll close it there. Okay. All right. Um, well, that will pretty much do it too as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this off screen and get that off screen and. Just leave you with a couple of final thoughts here. So, um, input stream reader is just a little bit more useful than the raw system .input, saw raw system .in input stream. Now, stay tuned to my next tutorial where I will wrap input stream reader into a buffered reader and we'll gain even more functionality. Now, try with resources is a very valuable feature that you should keep in the back of your mind. 
Uh, you will come across many classes in Java that require a close method to be called to free up uh, system resources. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.